Hey, welcome everyone in this new video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor. In this video, we're going to see how to implement Action Manager into an actor. So we're going to go to our content brother, we're going to go to Blueprints, open up our third person character, and then we're going to add a new component, which is an Action Manager, like this. Then we're going to right click the Action Manager, add the ready dispatcher, add the uninitialization dispatcher, then we're going to go to our class settings tab and we're going to add a new interface to our blueprint which is the action interface. It's adding one new variable, one new function, two new functions we have to set up for our action manager to work. So we're going to double click our find action manager function and we're just going to drag and drop our manager into the blue, the blue pin like this. We're going to hit compile. Then we're going to open up our action, force take action function. And this is actually going to be outside of the scope of that tutorial. And we're going to take care of that in another video. This is about uh, crowd controls and forcing our actor to take an action. But for that, we need to set up other events which are also outside of the scope of that tutorial. So we're going to go back to our event graph and then we're going to drag and drop our action manager and we're going to drag a wire out of it and we're going to type in setup and it's giving us one result which is add action. We're going to click that and it's giving us a, a big node which we're going to plug to our on initialization event and what is what are all the parameters saying so name this is the name of the action we are adding to our character so we can we can call the action we are creating the way we want it's going to be displayed by the name we add here if we click our action drop down menu we have a bunch of actions these are the base the basic actions i created uh, while working with mce uh, if there is no if you don't find the actions you want to create you can go to your content browser go to multiplayer combat editor folder go to the settings folder and open up your e action enumerator and in here you can click the top right button new which adds a new action to the list of action and you can call that however you want for instance iron sight you can hit save go back to your character right click your add action node and refresh that node and then you can select iron sight if you want we're going to create that action and you have two two new parameters prevents and cancels so what are these prevents is the list the list of actions which are not able to be taken while you are performing iron sight and how to fill that list you can drag and dr drag a wire out of prevents and type in make array like that. It's going to create a new board where, where you can select actions. So for instance, when you are in sight, you cannot move. And then you can add new actions to prevent. For instance, you cannot interact when you are in sight. And the same goes for cancel, except you, you can fill the cancel list the same way you filled the prevent list by dragging a wire and typing make array like that and you can specify what actions are actually being cancelled when you trigger iron sight and for instance maybe you were jumping maybe you were jumping and then you iron sighted uh, in that case you're going to stop jump you're going to stop jumping so that's an example and Inputs is just the base, the base key you decided to 
you decided to add for that action. And afterwards, you can dynamically modify that, that input and it's going to be the subject of another video tutorial. For now, we're just going to say uh, spacebar, for instance, or right click. And then we can add another action, which is, for instance, move and another one, which is, for instance, jump. And what does jump prevents? Uh, nothing. So how do jump prevents nothing? You can right click a pin and remove the array. You cannot remove you cannot remove the link in here. You cannot compile if you remove that that pin. So you have to connect them. And what does jump cancels? Jump cancels iron sites for instance. And how do we jump? We jump using spacebar. And how is jump called? Jump Jump is simply called jump. And same goes for the move action we created. It's called move. And how do we move? We move using WASD. W-A-S-A-G. So what does move prevents? Move prevents nothing. And moving cancels nothing. Like this. So we created a bunch of actions for our character. But how do we actually know he really have he really has these actions? Well, we actually can simply create an action overlay that is going which is going to display the list of actions of our character. So let's drag and drop our action manager. Let's drag a wire out of it and let's type in add. It's as it's giving us spawn action overlay. We're going to click that, like this. We're going to to connect this to our dispatch on ready event, and it's asking for an owning player. And this is actually the player controller which needs to display the action overlay on his screen. So what is that? Play what is that controller? It's actually the client owning our character. So we're just going to drag a wire out of our owning player pin and we're going to say get player controller like this. But there is actually something we need to add. We need to right click and add a branch because we only want to create that action overlay on the owning client, client. and we can do this by dragging a wire out of our condition pin and type in is local locally controlled like this and then we can hit compile hit save hit play and it's going to take a bunch of time because we actually added a type of action and we can see we have an action overlay with move jump iron sights and we also have a current action and a list of recorded actions. So the current action is the list of actions we are currently taking. And the recorded actions is uh, an advanced feature we'll talk about in another video. So right now, right now when we are moving, we do not see any, anything in, in the list of current actions. And that's because we need to tell our action overlay, our action manager, when we are moving. So we're going to add that real quick. So in Unreal Scott, so I hit, I hit my key to save everything in my project. And so we want to go to our to to there to to the event graph of our third person character and we want to take a look at the co the code and re epic games created in their third person blueprint so we have something called mov movement input in here and it's actually quite complicated to set up our move actions in here because we cannot just say 
we cannot just say is that axis equal zero then I'm not moving because maybe that axis is not zero as well so we're just going to store them both I believe so we're going to drag a wire out of our axis value pin we're going to promote that to a variable this is going to be called current forward input like this and we we are also going to do this for our move right inputs promote to variable current right input like this and then we want to create a new function saying am i moving so how do you create a function by just pressing that button new function and then am i moving it's going to return a value, a new parameter, which is going to be, a, uh, it's actually not going to return a value it, and it's actually not going to be called that way. It is actually go be, going to be called check for move action like this. And in there, we're going to add a branch by pressing B and clicking we're going to connect that branch and we're going to drag and drop the two function the two variables we created by holding and and while holding our control key like this in order to get the to read their values so we want to say is this equals 0 and this equals 0 If so, we're going to stop to end action. If not, we're going to start action. We're going to remove that return node. And what action do we want to stop to, to, to end and to start? The move action. Like this. We're going to hit compile hit save, hit play, and it's not going to work. Just because we forgot to call that function we just created. So we're going to go back to our event graph and right after the move forward and move right, we're going to call our check for move action function like this. We're going to copy and paste that move action node like that and we're going to hit compile hit save hit play and when we move it's going to write it down on our action overlay like this so this is going to wrap up the video hope you guys enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one bye bye